here's another interesting plant. This is another uh, invasive species. And uh, like most invasive species, this one's fairly prolific and it takes over vast areas. Uh, this is Japanese knotweed. It ends up getting big, eh, not really heart-shaped leaves, but more of a, I, to me, I would call it a spade-shaped leaf. And the stem is hollow. And this forms big stands. Uh, that can tower up over your head and it's easy to identify in the winter because it looks like old dead stands of bamboo because the stems are made like a bamboo with chambers between each uh, each knot each node But you can take these small shoots and eat them raw, or you can cook them. The larger shoots, this one here is a couple feet tall. Um, it might be starting to get tough. Yeah. The outer skin gets pretty tough and stringy, but if you're careful, you can peel that outer skin off and uh, eat the insides. And it has sort of a tart, uh, kind of a citrus or maybe a sour apple flavor. But as it gets older, and for me, even if I cook it, the flavor changes, and it almost tastes like corn silk. It's just got that corn silk flavor. It's not one of my favorite edibles, but it is an edible, and it's worth knowing. because it does have some good nutrients in it and it has a different flavor so it could add some variety people will take it and they'll make uh, somewhat like a rhubarb pie because it has a uh, it kind of tastes like rhubarb if you've ever had rhubarb It has a good flavor when it's raw, but I don't like it once it's cooked. I think you have to be careful about eating too much of it. Well, like with most sour plants, you uh, you don't want to overindulge on them because they contain uh, compounds that in some people can cause uh, problems. Kidney stones. But a lot of the commercial vegetables we buy have those same compounds in them.